There was a moment, I would say, last spring where myself and the other assistants kind of looked at each other We're like, hey, there's, this is a special group. In all honesty, this season has been a dream come true. It's probably the most special season I've gotten to go through as a player. I've seen it all. I've been here for five seasons. My first one, we didn't even make the conference tournament. And my last one, we had a huge shot at winning it. It's hard to really find you know, the words to describe this this season in general, just because you know. And I've elaborated this to the team, but this was probably my favorite year that I've ever had as a player, as a coach. Uh, not only was it great to see the growth from the players, uh, both on and off the field, but also, you know, I learned a lot within my time as a head coach too. A lot of times you see coaches or teams try to shy away from adversity. But our team, we meet it head on and we're able to meet those challenges and find success and growth along the way. The Wildcats are off to a hot start, undefeated on top of the conference in a month. It felt like we were untouchable. We would sweep weekends, we'd go out and win games, and like it felt like we could compete with anybody and nobody could compete with us. I remember walking through the tunnel, walking around like to film or something. And we were like 6-0 and at that point. And we were like, I love when somebody asks me how soccer's going right now because I'm like, oh, it's going amazing. We won every game. There were definitely some moments early on uh, that, we, that we had a lot of success. And then afterwards, about halfway through, we, we hit that adversity. Well, four games into the Great Lakes Conference soccer season, the Grand Valley Lakers find themselves in an unusual position. Second place tonight at home, they'll take on the team that's on top right now, the Northern Michigan Wildcats of John Sandoval. Since Sandoval arrived three years ago, Northern has gradually become a very good team in this conference. Up until that heartbreaking game at Grand Valley, we hadn't lost a game. Like we probably like really felt untouchable. We went into that game like wholeheartedly thinking we were gonna we were gonna win. We were gonna put them in their place. Is out and she's got Reed. Reed's gonna win the foot race, it looks like. Oh, the ball ran away from her a little bit and then dragged down from behind. And that's gonna be a yellow card against the Northern Michigan defender. Uh, in truth, oh, he's got the red card out. Last defender. Whoa, that's unbelievable. I was so shocked. Like, I have never experienced something like that. I didn't even see this happen. I, like, fell and I was on the ground and I hear one of my teammates say, um, a straight red and I look up and turn around and I was like in a haze for like a while. I just, like, I can't even remember what I was feeling. I think I blacked out and I came to terms with it. My first thought was, oh shoot, for my team. I remember saying something on when I was getting like escorted out to, I was like, my team's got this. I believe in my team, even though it's so hard like with the man down. For a call like that to happen in the game and you go down 1-0 and you're down a player and you still manage to tie it up and you just grind out the last 40 minutes and become that close and concede a goal in the last minute. Sturgeon, Sturgeon lobs, it's off the crossbar, the shot, it's in the goal, it's Bearden! Bearden has done it for the Lakers with 75 seconds left. It was heartbreaking and um, I think that was like one of my most memorable moments as a leader, honestly, because I'm heartbroken. I know every single person around me is heartbroken. I can see it in their eyes. I can see it on their face. And I'm like, what do you say, Captain? Like, what do you say to these people to like, how do you, like, I don't feel good. Like, what do you say to yourself? What do you say to everybody around you? Like, how could you possibly help anybody move past this? You know, I think we came up with the expectations that we were going to win every game three to zero. And the reality is when you play an opponent twice in the season, that second time around becomes much more difficult. I'm not going to lie, like we had some tough weeks. Morale might have been low, but I think that's where we grew the most as a team is like we recognized that. We recognized that we were all heartbroken and we recognized that we were all sad and we collectively like found a way like we lost our identity a little bit almost that we had created we found a way through those games to keep going and I'll always say like this resonates with me 
John has always said, good teams find a way to win. And that's what we did through those stretches of games. It didn't come easy. Nobody ever said it had to be pretty, but good teams always found a way to win. And it was the leaders, it was the captains, it was the, the group that kept us moving forward. And we really, you know, we were able to have kind of what you would call kind of a vibe check uh, when we felt like we were hitting a little bit of a slump. Uh, and we talked about those things and we went through our goals that we had within the beginning of the season. And, and we're like, guys, we're right on track to, to, to reach all these goals. You know, Parkside is a very dangerous team. They're unpredictable in a lot of ways of you don't know which Parkside you're gonna get. That was a game that I was nervous about because you know they didn't have anything to lose. They're very well coached, they're organized, and uh, you know, it was a difficult match, but at the same time, I knew that we were capable of winning. It's a cloudy, breezy afternoon here in Allendale, Michigan, as we get set for two semifinal games in the 2022 GLIAC postseason women's soccer tournament. Just getting set to kick off between Northern Michigan and Saginaw Valley. It's a game that we deserve to win, and we did. And a lot of the times when you're playing in these high pressure matches, semifinals, GLIAC finals, it comes down to moments and we were better in the right moments within that Stanley match. Just into the game, the ball curled, ah, the touchdown, and that's a goal for Northern Michigan to take the lead. Brooke came up with a huge moment. She was able to score that, that winning goal, and I think that's a match that we were looking for a little bit of more revenge for. They were able to beat us in a match early on in the, uh, previously when we played them at Saginaw that we felt that we were better in. Uh, and so I think we came in with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. We also knew, although we weren't talking about it, we knew that a win against Saginaw would almost solidify our spot in the national tournament. We put away two goals against Parkside and we put away a beautiful goal against Saginaw and we're moving on. And Northern Michigan has done it here in semifinal number one. A first half goal stands up and the Wildcats move on to the championship game on Sunday against the winner of the next contest between Grand Valley and Ferris State. That one will begin. Some coaches and some people around the GLIAC probably didn't, didn't think that we would necessarily get there, but I can tell you for a fact that within this group from day one, we knew that's where the road would always lead to. And good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Allendale, Michigan. We're here today on the campus of Grand Valley State University getting ready for the championship game in the 2022 Women's Soccer Postseason Tournament. The top two seeds have made it through to this game here that we have for you now. It's the number two seed, Northern Michigan, taking on number one ranked and seeded Grand Valley. We had played at, in Allendale so many times that we were like, this is our home field. I think that just built on our confidence and we were like, had a little chip on our shoulder like getting off the bus. I think that we had played four or five games in like nine days and like I remember feeling so excited for it but so nervous, uneasy. And you know, sometimes you can be so mentally pumped up and just like things just don't go your way in a game like that. Inside the 18, Bruce Lowe with the sliding tackle. Out but only as far as Fetty. Back to Sturgeon, and she cue one up. That looked like it was handled. The referee, penalty shot. Handball in the area. Anytime you get a penalty kick in a big in a big match, it's never, it takes the air out of things. Here we go, for the lead. Oh, how classy is that? Off the crossbar and in. And the worst part about it was when it went bar down and she almost missed it. And, you know, you missed that PK, I think we're in a much different piece. It took the air out of us, took the wind out of our sails, and it's really hard to bounce back after that. And then we talk about, you know, you can't concede goals within the first 10 minutes of first or second half, and then that's what we did again. Good ball here, Ferraro. Ferraro's got Reed on the outside. Chance for Taylor. Right. Oh, she's done it again! Taylor Reed, the conference player of the year. Knocks it home off the feet from Ferraro. Grand Valley has that important second goal. That 
Second goal hurt, especially as a defender, and it's just like a stab to the back. I couldn't be more proud of how we responded after those moments. I think there was a level of like, okay, you know, we have to respond immediately. We have to go. We can't be intimidated. We all had confidence that we were going to turn it around, but it just takes a little bit out of you, I suppose I would say. Really hard to bounce back after that, but like you saw the way that we did. Here comes Northern Michigan. Ball outside to Pedala. Pedala's in position. They've got a marker. Great play there. That ball was bobbled by Robertson and knocked into the net. And Northern has the goal. We're able to get a goal, you know, just an energy and just a, a grinding out play by Molly Pistorius to be able to find that ball in the back of the net, a couple bounces here and there, and then maybe we level it. And I like our chances in OT or in penalty kicks. We knew it was coming. We could feel like a goal was coming, like everybody could. And I think that down two to zero, coming back with Molly's goal really boosted us because we knew we could do something like that, and then we did. Then we were just like, what's the next move? What can we do now? And that's a big part of the team's mentality is what can we do next, even when we're succeeding. Here's Brusolo with Kate Brown. This is a mistake here for the Lakers, allowing Pistorius to get loose. Rick Russell caught that time by Kendall Robertson. First team banging against Barrett. Down to the final 10 seconds. That being my last chance at it, I think that made it burn a little extra. We came so close and like it could and it should be us, that feeling, and but and that's the last chance I'll ever get to try. And that'll do it. The Lakers win the GLIAC championship. We absolutely deserve to be there and we deserve to win. And it was just like a matter of putting it out on the field and like getting the job done. And that might be like one of the hardest things about us losing it is that we knew it going into it and we knew it going out of it and we faced adversity in the game and we truly like battled for each other. That was one of the most challenging times I think I've had as a coach because uh, your heart breaks for your players. And when you have a, a co again, when you have a coaching staff that's been through those things, they know exactly how you're feeling. And it was really challenging to see the players afterwards and see how, you know, how much it meant to them and to bring that first ever GLIAC championship to the program. It's something that they've worked extremely hard from. And to see them and to see us fall short with the amount of effort and energy and everything they left on that field, it was just heartbreaking. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 2022 NCAA Selection Show for Division II Women's Soccer. If you would have asked me two days before the watch party, I would have was saying we're in. We're 100%, there's no way without our body of work that we can't be in. And then as time creeped closer and closer, you, you just feel nervous. You don't know what to expect. Doubt does seem to set within your mind and you're watching it as it plays out and you can't help but remember the year before when you were in the exact same situation, watching this selection show and not hearing your name called. This is the absolute best time of the year for 56 teams that are about to find out they've been invited to play in this year's national tournament. Now, there are certainly I was moderately confident that we were gonna get in. I guess that was like the little angel on my shoulder and then like you got the other one over there. It's like, you didn't make it in last year and like you still had a great year last year. And I remember sitting in that room with my teammates and just everybody has so much nervous, excited energy. And I, I had hoped, I was just looking forward to the moment that I was gonna get to read our name on the screen. Finally to the Midwest region in the very bottom left corner of our national tournament bracket where Grand Valley State is the top seed again in 2022. They will play the winner of Maryville and Northern Michigan. Yeah! And then as you hear your name, it's just you just explode, you explode with joy, you know, joy and happiness for the group. 
and I think it's on a lot of people's faces when you watch their reaction. It just was a spectrum of emotions. It was the best feeling in the world. Everybody's jumping up and screaming, smiling, yelling, hugging each other, and it was validating, and it was awesome. Obviously, you know, there, there was a lot of excitement surrounding, surrounding that match, and it's, it's difficult to reflect on because you can't help but think that we were the better team in those moments and that we deserve to, to win. And our players ultimately left, they left everything that they had on the field. They battled the entire way, and we just came up a little bit too short. And really that was the most difficult part about it is that we felt that we deserved to advance and we felt like we deserved to win. But again, it just doesn't, doesn't always go that way. Uh, and so again, kudos to Maryville for getting the result and, and to advancing. And that was, uh, that was definitely the most difficult loss that I've ever had in, in my career as a, as a player and as a coach that uh, stood by me and stuck with me for, for quite a long time. After the dust settled for a little bit, I found some joy and some happiness to know that the experience that I've had with those players, uh, the, the seniors, to see what they've been able to deal with and to go through over the last few years to get us to this point is very rewarding. Um, and we live for moments as coaches, for the text and the calls as they graduate and then they move on to bigger and better things to say, hey coach, you know, just thinking about you, hey coach, this is what's going on in my life. And those are ultimately, and that's ultimately what the game is about. Those relationships that you form with, with young adults, with competitors that are gonna be going on uh, and hopefully having a major impact in the world and changing it for the better. This program is special. I couldn't see anything going any other way. Being the worst team when I was a freshman and getting second and having such a successful year at the end, I think that it's just so cool to be a part of both of it and all of it and like I couldn't ask for anything else. I'm just so proud of how far we've come through all of our adversity and I hope that the program keeps going up from here and I know they will. In all honesty, uh, this season has been a dream come true. It is unlike anything, I, it's probably the most special season I've gotten to go through as a player, at least in a very long time. And just the connections that I've been able to build with my teammates, it's just been a journey and like been everything that I could have hoped for for my fourth season at the school. And being able to be that close with my teammates and compete and just chase that winning feeling with them it has been everything I've ever asked for. We saw a team that has the skill, but more importantly, the mental toughness to get through those challenging and adversity uh, times, for sure. And we didn't get there through the 18, 19, 20 matches that we played throughout the year. We got there through every single day, bringing it through training from basically the last person in the depth chart to the best player on the team, every single player brought it, and that's what led us to the success. We laid bricks, and teams before us laid bricks too, like I've been a part of it, but this team truly recognized their potential, and like this is a team that can make something out of nothing, and we knew how good we could be, and we did not settle. We didn't settle for anything less than like what we knew we deserved and there's some brick layers, trailblazers on our team. That's what, that's what we are, trailblazers.